Okay guys, so as part of the stroker build, obviously we need to put valves in the cylinder head. So I've got the cylinder head in front of me and I wanted to film the process of doing this just to show you a little bit of detail. First thing is I'm using this little ring compressor, which as you can tell has got a little bar for the handle which doesn't have a nubbin in it, which is a bit of a bad design flaw, but we don't worry about that. This basically is a U-shaped clamp with a screw-in part on this end a screw in part on the other end and a little cap that sort of slots on there and then has a little uh, spring loaded ball to hold it in place. What this basically does is go all the way around, the bottom part sits on the valve, so this part here. This will sit on the retainer and it'll allow me to then compress the spring. Okay, so here's our valve spring, conical shaped valve spring in the M52 engine. The cone sits upwards with the, the little collar part, the washer, I can't remember the proper term for it right now, sitting in there. And this is gonna go down over where the valve and the stem seal is. So the stem seal is already in place, as you can see in there. And then below that, we also have the valve spring seat. That's absolutely crucial that that's in place. I'm just gonna get the magnetic pickup tool and lift that up just to show you that. So this is the seat here. Being an aluminium head, you need this spring seat in place or the spring will just wear a hole in your head and you don't want a hole in your head. So you need to make sure the seat goes in place first and foremost. Your spring and your retainer can go beyond that and then the valve will come up from below. I'm just gonna grab the next intake valve. And then we want a little dab of oil on him, so. Okay, so we just got basic engine oil. I don't wanna go crazy here, I just wanna wrap a little bit around the stem of the valve. Okay, and then I can go in from below and I can carefully pass the valve up. I'm actually watching where the valve is sitting there and it's coming up the guide. And if we get in nice and closer, you'll see there's a little bit of oil just pushes itself through the stem seal. And we push the valve all the way home. So now we take our spring and our retainer and we place him in place. We'll take our little tool wind them out to make sure we've got a bit of free play and we'll get him in the top first go underneath and hold it on the bottom of the valve and then start to tighten him until he binds a little bit so these, these clamps have a little relief in the bottom of them that you can see just here that allows that seat or that collar to sit inside of so the thing can't move left or right you've got a lot of control then on the, the spring as you compress it and what we want to do, we want to get in here with a little bar and I'm going to compress this all the way down, making sure it doesn't fill the valve as it goes down. Now, we're in no rush, I'm just taking my time doing this. You know, one of the ideas of doing this is that I don't do what I normally do with doing anything with cars and try and do it all in five minutes, guys. I'm a bit of a, a nightmare for that. Just take our time. And what we want to do is we want to go all the way down so we expose all the grooves in the top of the valve. That's gonna allow us to get the collet to go around that nice and stably. And I've found, this is a really fiddly part of this, but what I've found is if I leave it orientated, so I've got a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom to get in, I should be able to get the keeper in there fairly easily. So what I would say is I would use a pair of tweezers to put the collets onto the valve here. It's much easier, I think, to hold them the collet with a pair of tweezers. Um, obviously, you're trying to get right the way into this point in here. You're going to see me using a magnetic screwdriver. Uh, I don't have a pair of tweezers in the garage right now. I've found it's a bit fiddly like that. So another little tip I can give you, I've got some just multi-purpose grease here, and I'm going to put the tiniest little dab of grease on the valve just to hold that collet once I get it in place, because otherwise I think it's just going to want to move around like crazy. So I'm getting one on either side, just a tiny little dab. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go for the collets. I've got them actually here in some solvent solution just to clean any rubbish off them. If you can make that out, it's cone shaped and tapers towards the bottom of the valve. So if you've taken these out, you'll know exactly what you're doing. If you're just putting them in, you'll see where I'm going from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently hold them. I'm going to try and get in there. I'm going to place them against the valve and I'm going to grab my finger and just stabilize them. And I'm going to grab my next screwdriver. I'm going to play around with it here and try and get them to sit where I want them to sit. There we go, so he's in place. So we grab the next collet out of our little pot of thinners. And I will admit the first one's relatively easy. The next one is always a little bit trickier. So 
This is where my shaky hands really don't help. Let's get in there as best we can. There we go. Right, so now we've got them both in place. Right, the grease is holding them on the valve. They're nice and, and tight against the top of the valve there. Now what I want to do is just release the pressure on the spring and guide them around the collets. Okay, so he's nearly there now. So we wind him all the way back, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind the tool a little bit further back than it needs to come off, because when I come to do the next one, I'm going to need it a little bit higher up, obviously, the spring will be less compressed. I can then pull him away from the bottom of the valve like this, and tip the whole tool out of the way. Boom, Shanker, you've got one valve inputted. Same process for all the valves. One thing you've got to be careful of is if you don't guide it around the collets correctly, as it comes up, you may knock one of them away from the valve, that's going to turn into a pretty bad day pretty quickly so go real gentle when you release the pressure guide them around the collets as it comes up so that they both engage correctly and at the same time and you should be fine you can see here i've got my supertech valve stem seals in here i've got brown for the intake and i've got blue for the exhaust i've put them all up to here so far i've got to put these ones in this end but i'm just going to continue now and do these valves and then i'll come back to this and i'll show you what it looks like when all the valves are in at the end of the process so now in the last intake i just want to show you a couple of little things that i've learned as i've been going along here and what i've learned is if you get the keeper nice and stable like so you can go directly in there and bang them straight against the valve like that and then saw it going from behind I don't know why I thought about this but if you just rotate the keeper around because there's grease on there it's going to keep it in place I'll just drag him around gently and then I can put the next one on exactly the same way as the first one and then just gently this is where the steady hands come in which we don't have pop them in like so and then loosen them off as he comes back give him a little wiggle Make sure he seats properly. Easy. Eh? And then there's one more thing I just want to show you before I go any further. Um, you might notice behind me there we've got two stem seals not put in yet. I just want to show you popping them on because I was expecting it to be rather difficult. These stem seals actually go on quite easily. So if we can just focus on here, and um, these are the exhaust ones. Literally, I just want to take it and push it on gently with my hand. And then I'll take a 10 millimeter socket and I want to let them go down there, drive them in gently as well. I just want to show you how little force it takes just to pop this in. So that's just one finger there. I'm just going to ease them down. There we are. I didn't take any force, no hammering action or anything like that, guys. In addition to the valves going in, we've got one more job to do before really we take the engine out and actually clean the pistons up, get the old rings off and have a look at them, inspect them and you know just get them in a shape when I'm ready to put them back together. So on the bench right now I've actually cleaned the pistons up already uh, and I'm now just working on the con rods. I'm really happy how these have come out. So here we have all of the, the rods and the pistons assembled, uh, disassembled sorry. This one I'm pretty much complete on as a gudgeon pin there. Very little wear on the pin if I pop them down the bench. Not too bad at all. The rod itself, I've given a quick wire brush just to clean them on up. And then the piston itself, I've got him pretty much sparkling clean. Cleaned out all the ring lands, given a good wash for the underneath of it, got all the old varnish off. And I'm pretty chuffed with that. So I'm going to work my way along this now and I'm going to try and reassemble them one by one after I've cleaned up the rods. So I'll do that, and once I've cleaned up the rods, all I'm doing with these is giving them a quick wire brush and getting the worst of the oil off them. I'm going to try and film me putting one of these pistons back together again, which I believe is going to be a bit of a nightmare uh, with these spring clips and gudgeon pins. So let's see how that goes. Right then, guys, so here we go. So we have here piston number one, con rod number one, gudgeon pin, and spring clip. What I'm hoping to be able to do here is to get this spring clip in without too much grief, but I'm expecting it to be a bloody nightmare. Okay, first of all, all I've done when I've removed the gudgeon pin is I've taken out just one side of the spring clip. So this pin is gonna slot back in this way and hit the spring clip that you might or might not be able to make out that's already in there. Obviously, once it's gone through the bushing in the top of the con rod. I think for this, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of assembly lube just wrapped around the uh, the gudgeon pin, so let's try this. I mean, I'm 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 learning with you guys here, so 
just grease up the pin slightly. I'm only just putting a thin film in there. I don't want masses of this on here because the clearances are quite tight. So if I put too much of it on, it's all just going to come slipping and sliding off. First of all, I think what we'll do is we'll lay the pin down like that and then we'll drop the pin in. Actually, no, we won't. What we'll try is we'll try and insert it first of all like so. Oh, she's going in there like a clove, boys and girls. Why? Right, there we are. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's almost sexual. Right, so we just push them all the way in. And that has gone home lovely. I think what we'll do now is we'll pull the excess out there. Right then, and then the meaty bit. So, as I've removed these spring clips, it's bent them slightly one way or the other. So I'm gonna put these in, in the reverse, and looking at this side, the opening for the, the spring clip is pretty much at the top of the piston crown there. So I'm gonna try and replicate that round here. So let's, I think, lay them down like so. What I wanna then do is I wanna pop them in that way, so the high one wants to go in last. Right, okay, sorry, I stopped filming now because my neighbour came in, but we, we got there and there's a bit of a trick to it that I've just learned. It's always good when you've done one of these things. So, let's start that game where we took off. So a little bit of a loop on the finger. Right, so, let's get the excess off. So what I've found is going in and trying to walk it in is nearly impossible. What I've what I've did with the last one there is I went into the groove there you can see with both ends and as you push him in he will almost self seat to some degree. Take my wee screwdriver, give him a little extra helping and then pop him down into the groove. What's the big deal about that? It's actually not that bad. So just pay attention to which orientation this is. That is another one done. That's actually quite easy, nice one. Right, let's pump our way through these then and see how we get on. Right, that is them all done. So I'm just matching up the numbers. Every time I'm putting these together, by the way, I'm matching up the, the number stamps on either side of the, uh, the piston crown. I've lost the bloody bolt for this side. I wonder if I've got one up here. No, I don't, man. Now I'm going to dig that out in a minute. There you are then, folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. One well chuffed Scotsman there. We've got six pistons, apart from the rings. I'm not going to put the rings in yet. Uh, I'm going to leave that pretty much to the last minute. Assembled, cleaned, and ready to go. Buyakasha, as he used to say. Nice. Okay, I'm going to wrap these up nice and carefully. I'm going to call it a day at the garage today. And I'm going to get my ass off to work. Thanks for watching, guys. There we are.